Here is the combined summary. Researchers integrate the obstacle problem formulation from ice sheet modeling with deep learning methodologies to enhance ice thickness predictions, focusing on the Greenland ice sheet. By harmonizing the mathematical structure with an energy minimization framework tailored for neural network approximations, the study confirms the method's efficacy through 1D and 2D numerical simulations. The NSIDC0092 dataset for Greenland is utilized, incorporating bedrock topography for model pre-training, and registering notable advances in prediction accuracy. The ice sheet model is mathematically formulated on a bounded and connected open subset of the two-dimensional Euclidean space, denoted as omega, with a Lipschitz continuous boundary. The bedrock elevation is represented by the function b, and the elevation of the top surface of the ice sheet is characterized by the function h, which always maintains a value greater than or equal to b. The thickness of the ice, denoted as h, is non-negative throughout the domain omega. The relationship between h and b implies the existence of a free boundary, defined as omega plus equals h greater than b equals h greater than zero which separates the region where the ice is present from the region where it is not. The associated free boundary is expressed as gamma f equals omega intersection partial differential omega plus. The source function a, which denotes ice accumulation, is positive within omega plus, while it is negative outside omega plus, indicating ablation. The basal sliding velocity, ub, is a vector field contingent on the lateral position, and is zero when the ice base is in a frozen state. The horizontal ice flow velocity, u, is computed using the surface elevation h and its gradient. The viscosity of the ice is described by the Glenn power law with ice softness coefficient a, x, z, and exponent p, whose values are suggested by laboratory experiments. The ice sheet model is formulated as an obstacle problem, where the bedrock acts as the primary constraint, and the changes in ice thickness are studied as a variational inequality. This formulation is essential for understanding the dynamics of ice sheets and their response to climate change. The paper formulates a mathematical model for the morphology of ice sheets, incorporating the impact of gravity and ice flow velocity. The surface elevation h is governed by equation 6, derived from the continuity equation for incompressible flow and the correlation between the ice surface motion and the mass balance data. This equation is simplified to equation 7 when the coefficient a, x, z, is assumed to be constant. To form a weak solution for problem, 7, over the entire domain omega, the absence of volumetric ice flow towards omega is posited, and the volume flux q is extrapolated to be zero outside omega plus. The variational inequality, 12, is then derived by multiplying equation, 5, by a smooth test function v and integrating over omega, applying Gauss's theorem and using the conditions q equals 0 and a is less than or equal to 0 within omega. The volume flux q exhibits degenerate behavior at the free boundary, which is addressed by introducing a transformation h equals u caret p1, 2p, from, 3. This transformation yields a transformed version of equation, 7, given by equation, 14, where micro, x, u, and phi, x, u, are specifically defined functions. The paper makes specific assumptions, including ub equals 0, psi, x, u, equals 0, and micro, x, u, equals micro 0. Under these assumptions, the inequality, 12, simplifies to equation, 15, which is a key result of the paper. This equation forms the basis for further study and applications, including the implications of the transformed equation and its potential to model real-world ice sheet morphology. The inequality holds for all v is greater than or equal to 0 defined over omega and p is greater than or equal to 2, with micro 0 equals 1 taken for simplification. The paper builds upon the seminal work by the original authors, who identified inherent n online arides that were not thoroughly explored. This research focuses on two primary n online arides the PLA place type nonlinearity arising from Glenn's flow law and the intricate nonlinearity in phi x, u, due to the bedrock gradient, nabla b. The PLA place type nonlinearity is examined for cases where p greater than 2, introducing complexities that were not addressed in the original study. The nonlinearity in phi, x, 
U is explored for scenarios where the bedrock elevation is not flat, introducing another layer of nonlinearity. The energy minimization formulation is introduced, where V is a Hilbert space such that V element of H1, omega, and U is a subspace defined by the Dirichlet boundary condition. The constraint set K is defined as the set of V element of V that satisfy V is greater than or equal to V in omega and the Dirichlet boundary condition. The variational inequality problem is equivalently posed as an energy minimization problem, where the goal is to find U element of K such that J, U, is less than or equal to J, V, for all V and K. The energy functional J is defined as J, V, equals B, V, V, A, V, where B, V, V, is a PLA place type term. A regularization term is introduced to the energy functional leading to the augmented energy functional L, V, equals J, V, plus alpha integral omega, B, X, V, X, 2 plus DX. Based on previous findings, the unique solution U of the regularized problem approaches the solution of the original problem as alpha grows large. This leads to the minimization problem MINV element of VL, V, with the energy functional given by L, V, equals, 1, P, integral omega, nabla v psi, p dx integral omega avenue dx plus alpha integral omega, b versus, 2 plus dx. In numerical computations, the continuous energy functional is approximated by its discrete counterpart, l, v, equals, omega, n, n airy summation i equals 1, 1, p, parallel nabla v, xi, psi, xi, parallel p, 2 a, she, v, she, plus alpha, b, she, v, she, 2 plus, where she are the discretization points. Here is the combined summary. The modified energy functional L, v, is defined as the sum of four terms, accommodating non-zero solutions on the boundary, and is approximated using a fully connected feedforward neural network F. Road right pointing arrow RND. The network's weights and biases are refined iteratively using backpropagation to minimize a loss function derived from the energy minimization formulation, consisting of three primary components. The residual loss, the obstacle loss, and the boundary condition loss. The total loss function L, theta, is a weighted combination of these losses, with coefficients alpha and beta balancing the importance of PDE satisfaction, constraint satisfaction, and boundary condition satisfaction. The training process employs a batch approach, refining the network parameters iteratively to capture intricate nonlinear relationships and approximate the solution efficiently. A sequence of numerical experiments is outlined to test the deep learning approach for solving partial differential equations with obstacle constraints, employing the method of manufactured solutions to create an exact solution for an augmented form of the PDE. The approach is applied to a simpler PDE with an obstacle constraint in 1D and 2D domains, followed by a more complex PDE with the constraint, using a neural network architecture comprising a minimum of five hidden layers, each with 128 neurons, and the atom variant of stochastic gradient descent. The primary objective is the minimization of the associated loss function, implemented and trained using the PyTorch library. The authors acknowledge that variations on this network and training structure could be investigated, but the focus is on feasibility rather than refinement. The 1D example with P equals 2 is considered, using an obstacle function characterized by a piecewise definition, and a visualization is provided in figure 2, comparing the 1D solution, obstacle function, and exact solution. The deep learning approach is validated through the method of manufactured solutions, providing a ground truth for rigorous comparison, aiming to assess the robustness and accuracy of this approach for solving complex PDEs with obstacle constraints. Here is a combined summary of the four pages. The research paper presents a novel approach to solving partial differential equations, PDEs, using neural networks, where a solution approximator is trained with modifications tailored to the problem specifics. The neural network undergoes training over 2,000 iterations with fixed regularization parameters, and its performance is assessed on a mesh grid with a fine resolution of 10-3. The numerical solution is presented in figure 2, juxtaposed against the obstacle function and the exact solution, 
demonstrating the robustness and efficacy of the proposed technique, which converges within 500 iterations. The training dynamics are charted in Figure 3, showing the evolution of various loss metrics, and the difference between the exact and approximated solutions is quantified using the L1 norm, providing insight into the loss versus iterations. This approach learns a neural network approximator that accurately learns to solve the PDE subject to the given constraints. The authors examine the accuracy of this approach as a function of the number of sampled points at which the PDE loss is computed, and the results demonstrate that the sampling granularity influences the accuracy of the derived solution. Figure 5 portrays the relationship between sample size and the resultant relative error, highlighting the reduction in relative error as sample count augments. A linear regression on the log transformed data points results in a slope of approximately 0.83, indicating an intermediate error reduction behavior between the theoretical slopes of 1 and 1 half. The analysis illustrates the reduction in relative error as the computational grid is refined, and the results show that errors decay faster than 1 sqrt n, but more slowly than 1 n for the range used. This is visualized in figure 5 where the scaling relationship between error and number of points, n, is plotted on log-log axes, and a regression line is fit to the error magnitude to compute the scaling slope. The analysis delves into the impact of sampling and regularization parameters on relative error, underscoring the need for balance between loss components. Table 1 presents relative errors for varying regularization parameters, emphasizing the importance of proper balance. The study then shifts focus to the 2D problem with P is greater than or equal to 2, utilizing uniformly sampled collocation points and a circularly symmetric obstacle function. An exact solution is constructed within the domain, demonstrating the neural network's approximation capabilities. Figure 6 illustrates the obstacle function, exact solution, and neural network approximation for P equals 3 while the training process efficiency is showcased through losses on a logarithmic scale against the number of iterations. The L1 norm of the difference between the approximated and true solutions is also presented as a function of training iteration. The research further examines the evolution of different losses during training and the convergence behavior of the neural network in solving the obstacle problem. Figure 7 depicts the evolution of total loss, loss 1, loss 2, and loss 3 over the number of iterations, providing insights into the neural network's performance and prediction accuracy. Figure 8 presents the L1 error for P equals 3 between the approximated solution U asterisk operator and the exact solution U, highlighting the neural network's convergence behavior and prediction accuracy. For P equals 4, the paper presents results using the same methodologies, with figure 9 showcasing the obstacle function, exact solution, and neural network approximation. The study demonstrates the effectiveness of the proposed approach in solving the obstacle problem, emphasizing the importance of understanding the evolution of losses and convergence behavior for optimal neural network performance. The paper presents a visual comparison of the exact solution and the neural network's approximation for a 1D obstacle constrained ice sheet model with P equals 4. The loss behavior during training is also shown highlighting the evolution of different losses such as the total loss, loss influenced by coefficient alpha, and loss affected by coefficient beta. The L1 error between the approximated solution and the exact solution is computed, demonstrating the convergence and prediction accuracy of the neural network. The approach is then applied to solve the obstacle-constrained ice sheet partial differential equation, PDE, in a simplified D domain followed by its application to a realistic obstacle geometry using the Greenland bedrock elevation data from the National Snow and Ice Data Center, NSIDC. This dataset offers comprehensive information on various parameters related to Greenland's ice melt and movement, including detailed insights into Greenland's topography, digital elevation models, ice thickness, and bedrock elevation data. The parameter range is extensive with DEM values ranging from 0.1 meters to 3,278.3 meters, ice thickness measurements extending from 0 meters to 3,366.5 meters, and bedrock elevation data varying between 963.1 meters and 3,239.0 meters. These data are used to evaluate the adaptability and robustness of the proposed algorithms.
The dataset NSIDC0092, comprising 301 columns by 561 rows, provides a comprehensive and granular view of the ice sheet in bedrock topography across Greenland with a spatial resolution of 5 kilometers. This grid resolution ensures precise climatological and glaciological analyses. The bedrock topography from the dataset is visualized in Figure 12, serving as our obstacle function for the subsequent analysis. When employing conventional random initialization, the neural network behaves erratically due to its failure to satisfy the obstacle, leading to numerical issues. To overcome this, a two-stage modeling approach is taken. In the first stage, the neural network is intelligently initialized by training it to mimic the bedrock elevation as illustrated in Figure 12. This preliminary training phase enables the neural network to learn and approximate the patterns of the bedrock topography. This is not a solution to the problem, only a method of initializing the network. In the second stage, the initialized network is trained to approximate the PDE, the same method as previously. This approach addresses the challenge introduced by the bedrock obstacle data from Greenland's ice thickness data and ensures that the neural network behaves predictably and accurately. The authors employ a neural network to approximate the solution to a partial differential equation, PDE, governing bedrock elevation and ice thickness in Greenland. Pre-training the network on bedrock elevation data facilitates a more efficient learning process, resulting in considerable error reduction. The penalty parameters alpha and beta are set to 4000, ensuring all weighted components of the loss are of the same order of magnitude. The adopted architecture consists of 15 hidden layers, each with 320 neurons, and undergoes training for 22,000 iterations to ensure accurate convergence and approximation of the Greenland ice thickness data. The training process yields an approximated solution, which is compared to the exact ice thickness data derived from the NSIDC0092 dataset. Figure 14 illustrates this comparison showcasing the neural network-derived approximation for p equals 4 alongside the precise data. To assess the performance of the approximated solution, the authors analyze the training losses, acknowledging the challenges in evaluating the solution's accuracy due to the lack of an exact solution and the non-interpretable nature of training losses in absolute terms. Instead, the authors compare the properties of the neural network solution to the ice sheet thickness data recognizing that the thickness data itself may not necessarily be a solution to the PDE. This approach enables an indirect evaluation of the approximated solution, providing insights into its performance. The pre-training stage and the subsequent training process, along with the chosen architecture and penalty parameters, contribute to the neural network's ability to approximate the solution to the PDE, offering a promising approach for tackling complex problems in glacier dynamics. The paper presents a novel approach to solving intricate problems related to the dynamics of Greenland's ice sheet by integrating mathematical modeling and deep learning. A robust theoretical framework is established, illustrating the underpinnings of variational inequalities and obstacle problems. The authors leverage the power of neural networks to seek solutions, demonstrating both theoretical and practical applications. A key highlight of their methodology is the integration of pre-training. By first acquainting the neural network with a representation of the bedrock topography, they ensure a more efficient learning process when the actual ice thickness data is introduced. This strategic move not only optimizes their results but also underscores the importance of judicious model initialization. The authors compute the losses that would be found from inserting the measured ice sheet data into the three loss terms, providing a benchmark for comparison. They then show the trajectory of the losses as a function of training iteration, with results indicating that all losses converge to an absolute level consistent with the real ice sheet thickness data's satisfaction of the PDE. This suggests that this approach well approximates the solution to this PDE. Similar analysis was carried out for different p-values, with similar results. The paper concludes by summarizing the exploration of the integration between mathematical modeling and deep learning to address intricate problems related to the dynamics of Greenland's ice sheet, demonstrating both its theoretical and practical applications. This research combines deep learning with mathematical models to investigate Greenland's ice sheet dynamics, showcasing remarkable accuracy when applied to the NSIDC0092 dataset. The study integrates various mathematical and computational techniques, 
including the Galerkin least squares finite element method, the obstacle problem, and the deep Ritz method. It draws upon existing literature, such as the work of Bueller, Pearsanti, and others, and acknowledges the importance of experimental observations. The author's approach builds upon advancements in ice sheet dynamics and incorporates deep learning to enhance computational methods. The paper cites a range of sources, including works on variational inequalities, elliptic partial differential equations, and obstacle problems, as well as deep learning frameworks and physics-informed neural networks. It also references finite difference schemes, partial differential equations, and deep learning surrogate models for uncertainty quantification. The study demonstrates a comprehensive understanding of the existing literature, laying the groundwork for novel methodologies and approaches. This interdisciplinary approach holds promise for climate science and can be adapted to other domains.